Yes, I willingly put my vulnerable computer on the public facing internet. For 14 days straight, I got hacked. I let hackers hack me and some of them had success or so they thought. What if I told you I wasn't dropped on my head as a kid and I put that computer there on purpose. In fact, I wanted it to be attacked. And my vulnerable computer that a hacker would see as an easy score, it's actually a sophisticated trap masquerading as a weak target. Now, as a blue team defender, I know exactly how they plan to attack real machines. I know their tactics and techniques. I know exactly what commands they run. I don't know exactly how they sleep at night because this computer could have been old reliable at grandma's house and she could have been 2024's newest crypto miner. Instead, it was a honeypot. A sacrificial decoy system designed to attract, detect, and record cyber attacks. It intentionally mimics a compromised computer, yet it's a safe environment where we can record attackers exploiting vulnerabilities. So we can examine and study the techniques and tactics of cyber attacks. I deployed 15 honeypots in the cloud as virtual systems, masquerading as compromised, vulnerable computers. Each one of these machines on the public facing internet and hooked up to sensors that log and record all the activity. I caught hackers and cyber attacks attempting to take over my computer and infect it with malware. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how these hackers operate. We're going to look at all the data I captured. We're going to hunt down where the hackers are. We'll find the needle in the haystack of data that I collected over the last two weeks, analyze their attack from start to finish. And by the time we're done, you'll understand what happens when you put a vulnerable device on the public facing internet. Spoiler alert, it's kind of like having your wallet hanging out the back pocket of your jeans. While you stroll down, a dark alleyway in the middle of the night in a bad part of town. Now the intro was kind of dramatic, but that is the idea. Honeypots are decoy systems meant to mimic a real computer that would be a potential target for a cyber attack. Honeypots are a way we can perform a type of proactive defending. A honeypot would emulate something like a web server or a database, a remote login server. Teapot is an all-in-one honeypot platform that can deploy over 20 unique honeypots as virtualized containers on one single computer. Teapot includes security tools to detect, monitor, and correlate traffic from each container utilizing the elastic stack and Circata. I chose to install it on top of a virtual machine in AWS, follow their documentation, run these commands and you'll be up and running. After that, you should create firewall rules like this so only your IP can access the control ports for the honeypot. Please bees. Here you go. Here's my honeypot. This is my virtual machine running in AWS. You can see it's running Linux, Debian, Debian, whatever you want to call it. Teapot utilizes Docker to run virtual containers, each has their own individual honeypot. So as you can see, these are all the honeypots that you can run. For example, WordPot. WordPot is a WordPress honeypot. Here is MedPot. It's a honeypot that emulates some medical protocols. So it might catch threat actors who are targeting the medical industry. Here's Log4Pot, a honeypot that looks for a specific vulnerability. So there's a lot you can do with these. This is Cowrie. It's an SSH and Telnet honeypot, which logs brute force attacks and shell interaction, emulates a fake file system and more. You can run dps.sh and boom, it'll show me everything that is currently running, how long it's been running. There's a Cisco honeypot, a Citrix honeypot, a DDoS honeypot. Here's Cowrie, our SSH honeypot that we're going to look at. If we go back to our dashboard and we'll pop into Kubana, which is part of the Elk stack. Here we can visualize, search through all of the data from each of our individual honeypots. And this will come pre-configured with all these awesome dashboards. From here, let's dive into Cowrie, our SSH honeypot. Before we do that, what is SSH? It's a network protocol that enables remote connections between two different computers. Here I am in a terminal on my machine and I'm going to SSH into my MacBook, which is sitting right here behind me. So who am I? I'm Blake. I'm going to say SSH and then the username at the location. And boom, now I'm logged in. You can see who am I? I'm Cypher now. Now we'll go into the desktop. Then I'll make a file, say test.txt. So SSH is the concept of a remote login. It's like I'm sitting in front of the keyboard, except I'm on a completely different machine. You can see pretty quickly how dangerous it would be if a hacker had SSH access to your machine. For example, if they had a server somewhere and they had a naughty file on that server, that hacker would download that file to your computer. He'd even run that naughty, naughty file and you'd be totally hacked. 
And what Cowrie does as a honeypot is simulate a fake SSH server. For example, if you do get into a Cowrie SSH server, this is what it will look like. Well, I'm root. It's telling me I'm on an Ubuntu machine. If I poke around a little bit, you can see there's a whole fake file system that makes it look like a real machine. You can see if I go into home, there's somebody named Phil. So let's go back to our Cowrie dashboard. See there's over 14,000 attacks, over a thousand unique IPs. You can see here's a map that maps out everyone that's trying to brute force log in. So guess using a whole host of username and passwords, which you can see here. This is the most popular username password combos, trying root, trying no password, password as a password. So let's dive deep. Let's hunt down these hackers. We've got 21 days worth of data and we're seeing 10 million different events, almost 11 million. One of the cool things about our dashboard is it actually shows us this table right here. So Kauri has some default credentials that will let you on the box if you can brute force it and guess the right password. And out of all those people who make it onto the box, this is the top commands that get run. So what they are trying to do on the box. For example, this looks like it's doing some stuff, CPU info, so maybe getting some device information. So this displays information. Okay, so they're doing some recon. They're trying to get some information about the system. Bin busy box, bin busy box. Okay, that's weird. Wget, that's that command we used earlier to pull a file from a server. If we do a search, let's see everyone who's trying to use Wget. Doing the same thing we were trying to do. Wget, download a file. Looks like he's doing some other stuff, making it an executable. Here's his source IP somewhere in South Korea. If we pivot it. Let's just see everything that he specifically is doing. And what I'm actually going to do is let's look at from this IP in Suricata. What does Suricata see from this guy? And this is his entire attack chain. And if we export this, here's where it gets interesting. So we can see this entire attack was a minute long. Absolutely, this was automated, right? And that's the majority of traffic on here. It's going to be automated scans, automated attacks. From here, we can see he's trying to use Telnet, which is like SSH, but it's unencrypted. It's a lot less secure. And now you can see here's the payload. So what did he actually send? And this is caught by Suricata. And you can see, look at this mumbo jumbo. Look how long this line is. Oh my gosh. In this dash dash equals, that's fishy. I'm telling you right now, what you can do, take this and say, what is this? Maybe chat GBT will pick up on it. It's base 64 encoded. Okay, so he's trying to obfuscate. What we can do is take this giant one. Let's go to base 64 decoder and let's see what he's trying to do that he doesn't want anyone to know about. Auto detect, hit decode. <laughs> Okay, this gives us a little more information. So this whole block of commands, this is like username and passwords. These are all the commands. If we go back to Cowrie and look at all of what Cowrie sees, 23 hits, I've pulled this into a CSV and you can see here he is, Korea, South Korea. Here's his IP. If we run his IP and virus total, you can see Korea Telecom. He's getting picked up as malicious, malware, all in the same minute on the 23rd. This guy is snappy. Here we get a little more information. We can see the event, the username, password, what he inputted, and then what the message from the system said. Administrator 1234. At that point, Cowrie let him in, and then he started doing his inputs. Let's look at these. Enable, system, system, shell, sh. What we can do is let's just throw all of these into chat GBT. Execute system commands, trying to get a shell, trying to get a shell. This downloads files from the internet, executes commands using the busy box, which is often used in embedded Linux systems. Okay, so this, this is hinting at some IoT targeted attacks, which is what embedded systems are, or like a phone, I suppose. It's downloading and executing remote files. That is no good. Here's the server and the port he's trying to get this file from last analysis date three days ago in Iran. Okay. And one thing that sticks out to me is that bin busy box binary that's getting ran with something weird. We don't even really, we don't know what this is. ChatGPT didn't know what it is. Look at all these bin busy box with mumbo jumbo that just looks weird. Here's a ton more bin busy box. If we look that up, BusyBox is a software suite that provides several Unix-like utilities. It's an executable. Okay, it runs in Linux, Android. 
the Swiss Army Knife of Embedded Linux. All these attacks are trying to utilize BusyBox binary to run commands. So they're trying to use that as a tool. So if we just look up BusyBox attack, it's a popular open source software. It's used in embedded systems like routers, and it's got several vulnerabilities. The most important vulnerabilities affecting the software are related to memory access. If we look down here, now we've seen various vulnerabilities. The best known cyber attacks happen to a busy box are Mirai, Brickerbot, and Bashlight. If we just look up Mirai, Mirai is a malware that turns network devices using Linux into remotely controlled bots to be used as part of a large scale botnet. I pulled a CSV of everything using BusyBox, and as you can see, here's all the unique IPs, here's what they ran, and here's when they ran it. So you can see there's a lot of people trying this attack. Look at this giant command in one line using wget, using curl, again changing the permissions. And this is echoing some x63, x64. Here's another one doing the echo. So we know it's BusyBox, we know it's related to the Mirai botnet. Let's look up one of these commands. Boom, IoT malware droppers, Mirai, which we saw earlier, IoT, which we saw earlier. And what is a dropper? The attacker launches a scan for vulnerable devices, devices that have root access using default credentials publicly available. So that's us. And for each vulnerable device, the attacker starts a root session, usually via Telnet. We saw that earlier. It tries to install malware. We saw that with the wget. The malware is executed. The device is compromised. So this is what we're seeing. We're seeing the malware dropper. The goal is to go get malware, put it on the device and start it up. So they open a socket with Telnet. Then they send that base 64 encoded payload. So they use BusyBox plus some random tag and then they check if something is installed on the system. Here you go. Checking if these are installed, this exact same syntax. Here you go, checking it again, different IP, all of these different IPs running this same attack. The first step so the dropper can drop files on the device is to find a suitable folder. The usual way to do this is checking the output of cat proc mounts. We know we've seen that a bunch of times. Cat proc mount, look, there it is. All these guys, cat proc mounts. So they're doing some recon, checking what tools are on the system, looking for and finding a suitable folder. This helps confirm it. Poorly secured IoT devices compromising them. Okay. Step one, gathering information. And look at this. Enable shell sh busy box. Almost exactly what we see. Enable system shell busy box. Step two, infect a device. Most common way is to download malware using TFTP or wget. You can see they even have some evasion. Instead of directly downloading the malware, they download a script that then goes and downloads the malware. The single level of indirection will bypass detection in honeypots. Step four, gaining persistence on the device. So the attacker is gonna try and get persistent access even if you change the username and password. And we saw this earlier as well. Cat.ssh, it echoes some RSA key.ssh, got a dot RSA key, authorized keys. And this pretty much sums it up. Here's an article from IBM about the anatomy of IoT malware attacks. Under Mirai, we see this is a busy box attack. They scan the internet for hosts with open port 23 Telnet, which has weak password word which is us. Once inside, the malware is installed. It contacts the command and control server. And then Mirai uses that command and control server to instruct all those bots on their botnet. They can launch a huge denial of service attack to whatever target they want. The author of Mirai, known as Anna Senpai, even released the source code in 2016. There you go. When I first got into DDoS, I wasn't planning on staying in it long. I made my money. However, I know every script kitty and their mama, and it's their wet dream to have something besides QBot. I'm your senpai. I would treat you real nice. <laughs> The authors have since been caught and pled guilty, leasing out their botnet army to cyber criminals. So there you have the entire attack chain from start to finish, everything I found and the interesting traffic I saw. If you're not careful with your IoT devices or you put a vulnerable computer out there on the internet, you're probably not gonna have a good time. It might end up as a zombie in a massive botnet used for DDoS attacks. And if you don't know what DDoS is, it's kind of like...